Hey everybody. Hi there. Well, this uh, video is about Glacier National Park, and we spent a month there, uh, mostly trying to work around the, the smoke from the California fires that were going on here in 2020. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to get pictures, and so it was a little frustrating, but my, my problem doing that paled in comparison to the wildlife and the poor people that have been burned out of homes and lost their lives and had some horrendous things and the hearts come out to them. It really was awful. But there was a lot of smoke, but there was still a lot of fun there, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we did a little surprise trip. I don't know if we want to tell you about it right now or not, but a very interesting surprise trip while we were in Montana. Yeah, you'll no, you'll see that. One. You'll <laughs> see that coming up. It was. It was amazing and hilarious at the same time. Um, but it's definitely a park worth going to. Uh, the going to the Sun Road is well. You'll see it. It's uh, not for the faint of heart. No, and we didn't know that. We didn't know about that road. Wait until you see this. <laughs> but uh, but really a great park to visit. Beautiful it's scenery. Had a wonderful time. So we Absolutely hope you enjoy beautiful. it. And uh, uh, that wraps up. And go ahead and watch it. And uh, please take in our other videos. Uh, and we do other videos. We do the uh, campground reviews and our maintenance videos. Trying to show you all the stupid mistakes that we've made so that you don't make them. And we've got cooking videos and all kinds of little tidbits. So that's right. We got a Lots lot of, of stuff. stuff. Tune in. Subscribe. Subscribe. Thanks we need so much. Subscribers. Yes. Please, please. subscribe. <laughs> that's our big shot. Yeah, we're not good at begging. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, folks. We'll see you later. Take care. Bye. The little town of West Glacier is the first thing that you're going to see. And it's such a cute, tiny, tiny little town. It's got uh, a cafe, a general store, gift shop, ice cream shop, and all the buildings are identical. It's just such a cute little town. And into the park we go, and we're going to drive up the going to the sun road. The very first scenic area is Lake McDonald. Now, Lake McDonald is really huge. It's a, a long and narrow lake. Of course, we can see the, the other side very easily, but it's very long. And the pictures here just don't do it justice. This water is so clear. And um, once you get out a little bit past the stones and it drops off, it's just this beautiful turquoise blue color it's just amazing and general even met a new friend that he got to play with in the lake for a little bit after the lake the road follows the river and one of the first attractions you'll come to on the river is mcdonald falls Then we have the Sacred Dancing Cascades. After that we have Red Rock Point and I think it's pretty obvious how it got this name. These red ro rocks are so red 
amazingly red and this really gives you an idea in this particular area of how blue the water is. It's just an amazing color of blue. Just a little ways further up the road is the Avalanche Trail area and this is probably if not the most popular spot in the park, it's definitely the second most popular. Um, they have three small parking areas at Avalanche Trail and all the four times that we went into the park, we were never able to get a parking spot there. Um, so we did miss that. But also an important thing about that area is that's the turnaround area for any vehicles over 21 feet. Um, so if you're driving like a class C or an extra wide vehicle or something, you won't be able to get past that point and, uh, you'll see why in just a little bit. As we start to make our way up the hill, we come across this tunnel and this tunnel is actually really cool. Um, there's a pull off shortly before the tunnel so you can walk back to it, but it has these two um, like balconies that go out the one side so you can uh, look over at Heaven's Peak and the area in that direction so that's really cool. So these next few shots will kind of give you an idea of how narrow the road is and uh, amazingly enough all the videos that we had watched before about Glacier National Park we didn't know that this was a narrow road and we didn't know that it climbed up the side of a hill so it is a little um, nerve-wracking a little bit if you're kind of nervous about that kind of stuff. Um, Ed actually drove up the road twice and I drove up the road twice and I don't think either, either of us were too terribly bothered by it. Um, there are two or three spots that are extremely narrow going around some turns um, but other than that it really wasn't too bad. So here's some scenery from this location. Got a little bit of a glacier up there. These mountains are awesome. Just beautiful. So I'm just going to do a 360 here. Hopefully the sun won't be too much in our eyes. The road is right on the side of this hill. There's a glacier over there. some more and then over here they have what they call Heaven's Gate it's a pretty tall mountain with lots of glaciers and snow on it and here's the mountain that they had to carve out to put this road in <laughs> So we're in Glacier National Park, and uh, this is Bergwoman Falls, way over there in the distance. The valley down below, and we are on this road. You would not believe this road. Oh, good Lord, it really raises your blood pressure. <laughs> I mean, you got to go up along all that the road goes up in there somewhere it's crazy That's the road that we came in on, down there right next to the creek, McDonald Creek. We've gone up about 2,000 feet. And 
this is the weeping wall. The rock here is so porous that when the, the rainwater comes down from the top of the mountains, it goes through this rock and kind of comes out through the tiny cracks uh, down to the road surface. So that was pretty awesome. This is the Triple Arches area, and this is actually a bridge that they built uh, to go between the two rocks to finish the roadway. Here's a small waterfall right next to the road just before you get to the Logan's Pass Visitor Center. The Logan's Pass area has several um, hikes that you can do right from that Visitor Center area. Um, we went into that parking lot several times and again, we're not able to find a parking space. Uh, we would have loved to have done one of those hikes, but we just weren't able to do that. This is Lunch Creek, which has uh, kind of like a cascading type of waterfall to it. Very pretty area. And here is Jackson Glacier that you can see from an overlook pull off. And they had a really cool informational sign at this overlook um, that tells you that the park at one time had over a hundred active glaciers in the park. Um, but now it's reduced to, I think it's about 26 glaciers remaining, active glaciers remaining. And that means they have to be a certain size so um, that was that was pretty interesting and then we went through an area where you can see that they had some wildfire damage and this is saint mary's lake just a beautiful beautiful lake uh, this little island uh, in the middle of this lake is called Wild Goose Island. Uh, very pretty. And uh, that about takes you up to the Rising Sun area, uh, which during the time that we went up during COVID, uh, Rising Sun was as far as you were allowed to go on the road. You weren't allowed to go all the way across because the Blackfeet Reservation had closed off the entrance on the other side. Um, so we got to Rising Sun. Our first day we stopped at the little cafe up there and uh, grabbed something to eat and then we headed back down again. So General's birthday was on August 20th and he turned five years old. Our little boy is five years old and uh, we decided that since he loves to do hikes so much that we wanted to take him for a hike for his birthday. 
So we chose uh, McGinnis Creek Road to do that. And uh, what was pretty amazing about McGinnis Creek Road, it, it did become one of our favorite places to go. Uh, but once we got on top of the hill, we could see the campground where our camper was parked. So that was pretty cool. Um, another interesting thing that we saw was this homemade tent that somebody had made when they camped up here. And that was totally awesome. Um, we went back up here uh, towards the end of our stay and saw that somebody had torn this tent down and that that really bummed us out um, it, it was just something really interesting to see and Something that possibly would offer inspiration to other people um, So we were sad that uh, somebody felt it necessary to tear that down Also on that hike we just happened to find this deck of cards on the ground and what uh, was amazing to us about that Ed and I had just recently been talking that we wish we had a deck of cards so when we get into places where the internet access isn't so good or something we could play cards and so that was pretty awesome to us to just be walking along and happen to find this deck of cards and here's some pics of our birthday boy getting all his presents The town of Columbia Falls is really a pretty awesome little town. We were totally comfortable there, just love the town. Um, but there is this one building in town that has some really awesome paintings on it. Uh, the front is painted as the E.H. Snyder Drugstore. And the side has an awesome uh, forest scene on it that's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, but was what was made it so much more awesome to us is that this is actually the Masonic Lodge. So that was pretty cool. The, the most awesomely painted building in the whole town is also the Masonic Lodge. More river time for General. Have you all ever watched a butterfly eat? This was totally amazing and fascinating to us. We are at the convergence of the North Fork, North Fork River and the Middle Fork Flathead River. So this is a Flathead River, one of General's favorite places to come. The water is just crystal clear and ice cold, glacier fed, I'm told. And the locals just have a great time here, and who can blame them? Uh, they set up on the shore over there. That's a road bridge that goes across. It's not a railroad trestle. And, uh, you know, why not? If I lived in this area, that's what I do is a lot of kayaking and having a great time. And we're just hanging out, letting the dog have some time in the river. This channel goes absolutely crazy. The <laughs> rock. Time to do some mending. It's all part of being self-sufficient. Hey y'all, we just drove uh, 45 miles of bad dirt road uh, out of northwestern Montana to come to one of the most remote Canadian border crossings and uh, it's closed but uh, you know there's a gate 
and uh, basically there's a ditch. So this is what separates the United States and Canada. And there's a marker way off in the distance there. And I did take some photos of that. But on one side it says United States, on the other side Canada. I did step across and uh, again, just a ditch. But, and, and then these two guys show up from Texas. So it's nice to know that we're not the only crazy people that we drive two hours or 45 miles of bad dirt road just so we can say that we were at one of the most northern uh, access points to Canada and certainly the farthest we traveled. If you look at a map of uh, northern Montana and Canadian border, uh, it's, it's as farthest north we've been. It's funny. So this is the Flathead River and we're at the Canadian border, uh, northwestern Montana to my right and Canada to my left. And, and this is the marking for it on this side. There's that there. And I'll try not make you dizzy as I turn around here. But uh, the way they denote this, there's the two fellows from Texas. But anyway, you can see beyond them, there's just a cut. Where, where they did the border, uh, they just made a big cut along with that ditch all the way up to the side of that mountain. And that's the super secure border between Canada and the United States. Unless of course you want to walk up the Flathead River to my left. And actually, as Sandy pointed out, I am standing in Canada, uh-oh. So we went all the way up and we saw the Canadian border and the traffic got less and less as we got up there. Um, I think if I had to guess, we probably could have counted maybe 300 mailboxes on this 45 miles of road. So there's actually a lot of people that live up here, um, but there's also a bunch of national forest access points whether they be trails or river access <laughs> sorry about that um i think there was a lake up here that we passed so between the people living here and the recreation spots which definitely are being used we went into one up by the canadian border and it's definitely been being used it's well used um, so that explains all the traffic that goes by our campsite and apparently people from Montana don't mind these awful roads as much as we do. <laughs> so our hats off to Montanians. <laughs> So I'm underneath our trailer and um, this is a used travel trailer that we bought at Keystone Bullet and we love the thing but um, we had some rodents getting in trying to figure out where we were coming from and I start looking around. Okay, whoever owned this before, the plastic underpinning, they must have had, it should be smooth like you see all the way back to that way. But, 
they must have had some problem with the kitchen sink tank or gate or something. And instead of taking these bolts out and, and dropping it down properly, they sliced it. There's a huge slice running back there. There's another one there that's patched with tape. And then there's a third one up along that gas line. Maybe that's why they didn't want to go through all the trouble because they would have had to drop the gas line too. So they just put three huge slices in this thing and threw some tape over it and said good enough. Well, it's not good enough. And uh, the tape has since gone here. Now what I'm gonna try and do is see if I can get a self-tapping screw and I'm gonna try and catch this part. But these two sheets just, I mean, now it's separated. The only thing I can think of doing, I mean, we're low on money, I'm, we're out in the field, is I'm gonna drill holes parallel to each other, across from each other, in series down through here, and put uh, tie wraps up through, and just basically see if I can stitch it together to hold it together and and then uh, put tape over it. There's nothing, no frame, nothing for me to grab anywhere close to this slice. Just terrible. So <laughs> I was very naive when we bought the trailer. I never thought to um, check the underpinning, but now I know and I would advise anybody to do that. Crawl underneath the trailer if you're buying it used for goodness sakes and take a look in case somebody has done something that they shouldn't have done. Okay, here's my jerry-rigging. I drill the holes across the gap and I just worked my way down. I had to leave them open because I had to flex this piece down to, to thread these through all the way down. So now I'm going to try and cinch it all up, cut the tails off, make sure it's all clean, and then seal it up with Gorilla Tape as best I can. I mean, that's all I can do, uh, given our budget, and we're sitting in the middle of the wilderness in Montana and having found this. So here we go. Okay, I worked my way along, tightened them all up, and then cut off the, <coughs> excuse me, tails. I'm just going to wipe this all off again with some Windex and paper towel, try and make sure all the dust is off, and then uh, seal it up with a good old Gorilla Tape and see if this uh, gets us through. That's all I know to do.